welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. The season's over. We have a winner, and you're looking right at him. <laughs> the commissioner won the league, called the r- league rigged, whatever you want to say. But uh, I got the fantasy football championship. Um, the refs were in your pocket. Yeah, it, it's it was a great season. We're going to recap a lot of the season. We're going to talk about some of League winners, league busts, uh, just anything we can think of. But uh, we have to talk about the championship match, and it was me versus my wife in the end. And unfortunately, we were the game of the week, W-E-A-K, uh, our favorite saying on the show. And it was kind of kind of boring, I yeah, hate to say. it was an exciting playoff, you know? I mean, the way I ended up beating Sammy, you know, by mm-hmm. less than a point, and uh, you and Marie put up monster points uh, during the playoffs, and then here for the championship game, she yeah. failed to crack 100 points. Uh, yeah, it was a little anticlimactic there yeah. at the end. And unfortunately for the both of us, there was a lot of injuries involved. Yeah. Um, Marie lost Amari Cooper last Thursday night um, because of an injury to, I think, his heel. And then Cortland Sutton never got out of concussion protocol, so she had to sit him. So she had to make a lot of late swaps. She decided to go with the high upside pickup pick up Rashid Shahid. And unfortunately, then she watched the Thursday night game with me as Jerome Ford got multiple touchdowns. On and her bench. Off. Yeah, she stumbled out of the gate when she saw that a bench player was blowing up. Because imagine yeah. coming out of that Thursday game, if she would have had like a 26-point mm-hmm. lead, that would have been uh, really encouraging for her. But right. when when someone blows up on your bench, especially at this point in the season, that's a, that's a tough swallow. Yeah. And then in the middle of the game, uh, Alvin Kamara also got hurt, so he went out. Um, the Titans got blown out, so when the Titans get blown out, Derrick Henry doesn't play. He only had 42 rushing yards. Uh, Tyler Lockett... Finished the season kind of rough. DK Metcalf stayed consistent. And then we'll get to him. Travis Kelsey had another terrible game. game, yeah. Um, For me, 16 yards. For me, I got lucky. I I had a pretty pedestrian game. The the Rams won their game against the Giants, even though they, honestly, they probably should have lost that game. Um, But the Giants missed an extra point. At one point, and then they failed their two point conversion to try to win the game or something like that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was like the Giants should have won that game. Um, Stafford threw a couple of picks, only one touchdown. Kind of his whole problem the whole season, just didn't get the touchdowns. Um, Cooper Cup, he got his touchdown, but he didn't do much else. And I mean, one of the biggest winners, again, we'll talk about him. Puga Nakua had a great game, 18 points. Well, eight of those points came on one catch. Yeah. Where it looked like he was going to get tackled, and then he broke loose. And mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be an easy touchdown. And uh, unfortunately for you, he got tackled, like, inside the five. But the bulk of his points came from that one long catch. Yeah. And then I had Christian McCaffrey, another injury in this game. Um, luckily, again, I didn't need him. But it's scary losing Christian McCaffrey. I hope he's back for the NFL playoffs. It, it, it'd be a less exciting playoffs without McCaffrey. Yeah. I see he's ruled out right now, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure they're going to bench other starters in week 18. Let's hope he comes back yeah. for playoffs. They said it's a mild calf strain, so they, they assume he's going to be okay. They're just going to take it cautiously. Uh, and then my other kind of like unsung hero is Isaiah Likely. He had two catches for two touchdowns and 42 yards. He really stepped up in the absence of uh, Mark Andrews. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you kind of took a flyer on him and pulled him off the waiver, waiver wires, and yeah. uh, he's been he's been playing pretty well ever since. Yeah, and it's another uh, I'm, another time that I'm glad that I ended up winning this game because looking at my bench was oh it hurt <laughs> it hurt three players that scored twenty plus points. Yeah, Jordan Love was one I battled with all week. Um, I thought about starting him over Stafford just because they were in a divisional game. But again, playing the two Rams receivers, you'd hope that Stafford would get some touchdowns. Just didn't happen. Um, and then Devon Achan was a, another one that some people questioned why I didn't start him. Ezekiel Elliott, up until last week, had been catching seven, eight, nine catches a game the last couple of weeks. So he was just a safe player, and that's what I went with. And I didn't know how much work. Achan was going to get. He got a lot. 
And then Jaden Reed was also a questionable call because he was injured up until game time. Wow. So I didn't want to risk waiting all the way until Sunday night, and then he maybe be out, and I have to scramble. So yeah, a lot of tough decisions, but luckily it didn't didn't matter, and uh, it worked out for the best. So I am the new champion of the ON TV Fantasy Football League. Congratulations. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't have to play anybody else this week because everybody else scored pretty good points. <laughs> Throughout this, and uh, it was pretty pretty insane. So the final standings, I want to just go over really quick because I think it's kind of interesting. Um, Sammy, who started at the number two seed, ended up finishing in eighth place. Wow. And I almost feel bad for the kid, but <laughs> he talks a lot of smack, so I can't be that upset. Um, I got first. Marie got second. Joe got the podium after being the eighth seed going into it. Yeah. Well, technically I was the seventh seed oh, that's right. in the first round of the playoffs. You're right. Even though I was sitting at eight for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's kind of kind of a moral victory, I guess, to, uh, to be up there in that third place yeah. uh, wearing the bronze medal. I think especially just the battle back uh, yeah. all the way. And yeah. Like, my team was pretty strong down the stretch run. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just... Stumbled in the uh, semifinals, but uh, what are you going to do? Right. Well, and that's why I said I, f I feel grateful that, you know, I made it to the finals and could win with a low score because my first round I had 153 points. My second round I had 156. Yeah. And then in the finals, my team finally stumbled. So, yeah, kind of uh, crazy. So let's go to the players and let's just recap the season a little bit. Um Again, like we've been talking about, this league has been a lot of fun. Everybody, for the most part, was very competitive. I know even Malik, he's one that, you know, in the past, I've tried to get him into some fantasy leagues of mine, and he always kind of wears out and uh, doesn't fully follow the the league as much. But this year, he was like, you know, I was really into it. And uh, we obviously you know Tracy definitely fully dove in headfirst into fantasy. Yeah, she really got into it. She's uh, excited and hopefully ready to come back next year and – improve but um i wanted to go over some of the league winners some of the league losers um some draft day steals that we made and things like that um so i don't know do you want to start just like by position yeah let's go to the top ranked quarterbacks on the season uh in most leagues josh allen uh finished the top fantasy quarterback which is almost kind of surprising because it, mm -hmm. it on the field it was a down season for him yeah uh, lots of turnovers. Uh, he got a lot of rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Um, but it does surprise me to see him ranked number one in fantasy. Uh, not by a lot over Jalen Hurts, but right. still finished number one. So. Yep. Uh, Malik uh, draft. Did he? Oh, he, he did. He draft him. Yeah. Yeah. He he mm -hmm. drafted him and kept him throughout the entire season. But yeah, uh, Josh Allen somehow pulled off. Uh, and, and any Josh Allen owner had some frustrating, frustrating yeah. weeks throughout the season where he would produce single points, but mm -hmm. then he'd give you really, really uh, big weeks. Yeah, I, th I think his biggest thing this year was definitely the rushing upside really helped. Like, he matched Jalen Hurts in rushing um, a little bit yet less yardage, but he got the touchdowns, and he's always going to throw a lot, so he got the extra passing touchdowns. Um so it's it's no surprise that Josh Allen or one and two running quarterbacks uh, usually get a little bit more points when you have a four point per passing touchdown league, um, and that's why you know you see Lamar Jackson also in third. Um, but I think the, the su surprising thing this year for me was you got guys like Dak Prescott had a <coughs> had kind of a comeback year, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, like some of these younger guys are there, and then you see. Patrick Mahomes, all the way down there. And we've we mentioned it a few times, but <laughs> he's one of the bigger fantasy busts, I think, of the season. As the guy who drafted him and was expecting three touchdowns a game from him, uh, he, he pretty much cost me my season. Um, really, really disappointing season from him, not just in fantasy, but on the mm -hmm. field too. Uh, he looked lost and confused toward the end of the season there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't. hopefully he can turn things around next season. But 
Uh, definitely one of the biggest busts. I drafted him, uh, I think, with my third pick of the draft. The You gr- drafted him in the second round. Oh, second round. Third, okay. Third pick of the second round, so that's uh, pick 13. Okay. Um, if you could go back, though, realistically, who do you think you would have drafted? Because after Patrick Mahomes, we had Devontae Adams, very up-and-down season. Derrick Henry didn't have very much of a Derrick Henry season. Yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown would have been the winner there. But then you got Tony Pollard. Yeah, he was another kind of a bust, especially down the stretch. Yeah, so a lot of those second-round guys, it, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to say. I mean, my third pick was... Um, Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs, so I probably would have drafted him with my second pick. Mm. And uh, maybe all my players would have got bumped up one notch. Yeah. But, yeah, with the benefit of hindsight, I would have waited to draft a quarterback in later rounds. Yeah, and that's why I said I think people kind of forget that this is this is more like how quarterbacks usually play. Last couple of years, the quarterback position has been inflated by a lot, and quarterbacks have been playing good. Um, but I think they've kind of come back down to earth lately and not playing as crazy as Mahomes and Allen were the past few years. You know what surprises me is seeing Tua so far down on the list because mm-hmm. he had that monster game Yeah, where how many touchdowns did he have in that crazy game? Yeah. And uh, you would think that would have, you know, bumped him up uh, the rest of the way, but Mm -hmm. he must have really put up some stinkaroos to be ranked so low on this list. Yeah. He just, he didn't, he doesn't do anything with his legs, so he doesn't add anything there. Um, He had a lot of fumbles. Um, His turnovers weren't too bad overall compared to everybody else, but. I mean, he's ranked just above Russell Wilson, who just got benched. Yeah. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. it's a little surprising because. Miami, for the most part, has been a powerhouse in this league and one of the favorites to go deep into the postseason. So it's surprising to see him rank so low. I guess I guess they did most of their scoring with their backs, I guess. Yeah, their running backs got a lot of touchdowns this yeah. year. So it's it's funny, though, you know, we, we mentioned Patrick Mahomes as a bust, but he's still the seventh best quarterback on the year. Yeah. Um, but that just shows you what level of expectation he is and what how much draft capital you have to get used to get him. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I eventually started uh, benching Mahomes in favor of Purdy, but when you look at their final fantasy points, there's only a difference of 15 points. Yeah. But doesn't doesn't it seem like Purdy was the better quarterback? Yeah, I think a lot of it, uh, I mean, kind of like we talked about all year, I think it was a lot of back and forth until the last few weeks. I think Purdy really solidified himself as he had really good weeks down the stretch Yeah. Um, that kind of put him over the hump. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it was It's a weird year for quarterbacks, but... Yeah. Uh, Pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to move to running backs just because it's next spot on the team roster. Um, What can I say about Christian McCaffrey? He has 120 points more than the second best running back. Yeah. That is elite level. He was the number one player in fantasy ahead of any quarterback, anybody. Yeah, he uh, he definitely rewarded any any uh, team uh, owners that drafted him. Uh, he did not disappoint. I don't think he m- missed any significant time all season. So, right. you know, if you can get seventeen games out of him, mm-hmm. uh, you're ahead of the game. And he he more than likely will be the number one pick of the twenty twenty four draft. And that's that's what we know as Christian McCaffrey. Again, we've seen him hurt so many times the last few years, and he just if he stays healthy, he can be that good. He can be a league winner, game changer in every matchup. Um, yeah, it's he's an automatic number one pick, and that's why I felt just me getting the second pick, especially in a year where Justin Jefferson was expected to be the number one pick, I felt like there was no way I could pass up Christian McCaffrey at two and get that kind of value. So, um, probably after, the most yeah the most surprising name to see rank so highly is Travis Etienne. Yeah, like. Could anyone have predicted on draft day that he was going to finish number two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think the running back landscape right now is the most interesting mm-hmm. going forward because a lot of the guys that we've known to be mainstays in the league, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara to an extent, he he had a good uh, season for the most part, but he's still on the edge. Um, Tony Pollard, who we thought was going to blow up, Saquon Barkley, all these guys that we've known for years to be top running backs, 
are nowhere to be found. Right. Jonathan Taylor, again, kind of banged up throughout the season. A lot of young guys, a couple yeah. of rookies finishing uh, high up. Mm-hmm. They, you know, Jameer Gibbs and Bijan Robinson, I drafted both of those guys. And I just, I like having rookies on my team. They don't always pan out. Mm-hmm. But to have those two guys both finish as high as they did, that's pretty satisfying. Yeah. And then number five on that list, Kyron Williams, I believe. I think he was a waiver wire pickup for me early in the season. Yep. Uh, when he was still on IR. Yeah. And then uh, when he started playing, it's a, think about that. I don't know how many games he missed mm-hmm. in, in uh, throughout the season, but he finished fifth despite yeah. missing a lot of games. Yeah, I think he was a huge waiver. Like, he's definitely the waiver wire ad of the year yeah, for a lot of leagues. He's also a league winner, I think, in a lot of places. Um, he's going to be interesting next year, especially because he was kind of that guy that they thought he would be, he would take over Cam Akers last year and he never did. And then he was hurt this year. People didn't really know if he would translate and he did for fantasy, but we still don't know if like he's good enough to be the starting running back next year, which is crazy to say, um, so High upside, it, though, and I, I yeah. think worth the risk. And mark my words, he may be top three, definitely oh. top five next season. Yeah, if the Rams don't add anything next year, he's definitely going to be pretty much a top uh, first-round pick, I would think. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's going to be crazy. Um, Raheem Mostert, I think he was the biggest surprise for me. Mm-hmm. He's older running back, and he just got – I mean, he has 21 touchdowns on the season. That's tied with Christian McCaffrey. Um, so anytime you're in the same vein as Christian McCaffrey, that's, that's a pretty good, pretty good season. Achan should have finished higher if he, if he didn't miss a lot of games with injury. It was, you know, for, for football fans and fantasy fans to see Achan have his coming out party and just really blow up along with Mostert mm-hmm. and then to get hurt and miss such a large chunk of the season. It's like, what if, what, right. what could he have done if he would have remained healthy yeah. So he's another one. HN, I think, is another one to keep an eye on yep. uh, next season. Yeah, especially if uh, like the Dolphins might move on from Raheem Mostert because he is getting older. Yep. Um, and HN might be that guy that takes over, which would be huge. Um, one last bust that I want to talk about, unfortunately, Austin Eckler. I know you're a big fan, Joe. Like Both of us are Yeah, he fans. won me a championship just a few years ago, and... He is nowhere to be seen. I have to scroll he's, down. There he is. He's, he's below way H&M, down there. Twenty yeah. fifth, right? And he was the preseason thirteenth uh, ranked player. Finished eighty eight. Um, finally had a season where he didn't get very many touchdowns. That would been had been his thing uh, the last couple of years. And the catches were just down. And I mean, the Chargers' offense in general just stunk. So. Yeah. That's part of the problem, but he is another year older, and he's another one of those older running backs. Um, so it it's going to be tough. I think the running back position is going to be the most interesting this off season. Let's talk about one more bus because what did Josh Jacobs do for you last season? <laughs> yeah, he willed my team to a potential <laughs> playoff uh, appearance. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to the playoffs, but he was like the one player that kept my team afloat last year. Yeah, he was a beast last yeah. year and the probably the biggest draft day steal last year yeah and man did he fall from grace and yeah and i think that's another one the raiders their offense just struggled for a while yeah. they they picked it up uh towards the end of the season but unfortunately in the end of the season when their team finally got going josh Jacobs was hurt so yeah he's he's another one that's going to be tough to rank next year because i think he still has a lot of potential in this offense but they got things to figure out too so yeah it, it's going to be it's going to be weird. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen with the running backs. All right, moving on to wide receivers. Um, I'm going to obviously kind of ignore Justin Jefferson with the injury. Uh, yeah. You know, you can't really help it. It honest, At the end of the day, he is a bust, but it's not because of talent. It's just the injury. Um, and who would have thought CeeDee Lamb was passing Tyreek Hill in the final couple of weeks after the way that Tyreek Hill's season started. Well, he got such a huge chunk of points against the Lions. That probably catapulted him yeah, into the did. league. But, um, but yeah, C.D. Lamb, uh, man, he really paid off for his owners. Mm-hmm. And to finish number one over Tyreek Hill is shocking. Right. 
Um, obviously, Amon Ross St. Brown has had an incredible season, which is great to see for Lions fans. Yeah, definitely. Um, A.J. Brown is there. So consistent. And there he is, number five, Puka Nakua. The rookie. He is, uh, I think, 20-some yards away from setting the rookie record. Yeah. Which, yeah, he has one one more week, even though he's going to be playing with a backup quarterback, which is unfortunate. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, who again? Going back to draft day, you have a crystal ball. How can you have predicted that Puka Nakua mm-hmm. was going to blow up the way he did? Now, granted, uh, Cooper Cup started this this season off hurt, right, and that gave Puka chances. But even when Cooper Cup returned from injury, uh, he still had chemistry with uh, Matt Stafford, yeah. and and both of those guys played fairly well, but. Yeah. Puka is a breakout star, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to be highly coveted next season. Yeah. Another one that I like to bring up, too, is Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. He's never had less than 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns this year. People thought he was going to be one of those players that just was over the hill, was going to have no success, and he's been amazing this season. Um, what he's done for his career, I think he's just an automatic Hall of Famer, and no matter what, yeah. and uh, it's cool to see. For a big chunk of the season, Keenan Allen looked like he was going to be a lead yeah. winner. And then, mm-hmm. of course, the injury bug reared yep. its head. But anyone who had Keenan Allen, man, they were getting points and yeah. chunks mm-hmm. from him. And, it, again, as a football fan, it was tough to see him go down because uh, he probably would have finished a lot higher than he did. I mean, he's still in, what, top six, yeah. top seven, mm-hmm. uh, despite the fact that he missed a good chunk of the final stretch of the season. So right. uh, if, if Keenan Allen comes back healthy next year, he's going to be targeted. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite player, I think wide receiver of the year is Debo. <laughs> and uh, I know how you feel about those Niners, but yeah, um, Debo Samuel, uh, he, he was kind of quiet at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. And then I think Ayuk got hurt for a little bit, didn't he? Yeah. And Debo was the guy and he was running it. He was catching it. Yeah. Um, he was a lot of fun to watch down the stretch. Right. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he was one of my favorite players from this season. Right. And the thing that I always bring it up, but like, if you look at his stats, he has 58 catches for seven touchdowns. Nobody is even close to that kind of stats. Mm-hmm. Now he does get extra yardage getting on the ground, getting touchdowns from the running game. But for a guy to have 58 catches with seven touchdowns, 871 yards, he's just a pl- big play waiting to happen. And it's not that I don't like him. I don't like him in fantasy. <laughs> he's he's awesome to watch in real life. Yeah. Um, but he's just he's that guy that I avoid in fantasy just because I feel like I would get the bad end of the stick if I played him. I thought uh, Adam, Adam Thielen was uh, in his golden years. I thought he was kind of going to be thinking about retirement, but he had a bit of a resurgent season. It was right. kind of nice to see him play well with the, the Panthers, despite yeah. how Poorly, the Panthers played this season, but mm-hmm. it's interesting to see his name uh, on this uh, front top 25 list of wide receivers. Right. And um, again, like we keep saying every year, it seems like young receivers come out of nowhere every year. Zay Flowers had a really good year for the uh, the Ravens. Tank Dell, until he got hurt, was a huge winner for the Texans. Um, and then we got second-year guys like Garrett Wilson and stuff like that that played really well again. Um so the wide receiver landscape is is pretty open still. Another big bust for me, I guess, would be Stefan Diggs. He started the year super yeah. strong and limped you into the playoffs, did terrible in the playoffs. And that's two years in a row now that he started the season really well, ended it on a low note. So. Did we talk Jamar Chase? We did not. Jamar Chase, another victim of the injury bug. Yeah. Uh, he still finished fairly highly, but you know he, he may have gotten you some wins at the beginning of the season, but then... He fell off the radar. So, yeah. and his quarterback got hurt. So it's it's hard to that too. And him. so you know that's the risk you take when uh, you draft a wide receiver so highly in in round one. Mm-hmm. You know Chase and and Jefferson both went in round one, didn't they? Yeah. We'll be looking at the uh, the draft results in a second, but right. Uh, when you put so much on them, and then to have them go down hurt, that that really mm-hmm. puts you at a disadvantage, and you really got to play the waiver wire. Yep. Yeah, I'm curious if if the running back drafting will come back a little bit more next year. Um, Just kind of a wait and see. All right, moving on to the tight end, which I actually think, you know, you're a big proponent of getting rid of the tight end position in fantasy. Yeah, well, 
I, I don't like being forced to start a tight end because at the beginning of the season, there were so few to choose from. Mm-hmm. You know, there there are tight ends who play like wide receivers and they deserve to be started. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of vocal about being forced to start a tight end. But I'm eating my words because <laughs> I was gonna say, if you look at this top 25 list of tight ends, there there were some game changers this year. And yeah. It was nice to see some some fresh talent step up mm-hmm. uh, to join Kelsey and uh, and Mark Andrews and and the guys that we've you know come to love over the past few years. Right. But look at all these names on this list: Laporta or another rookie, mm-hmm. big year for rookies in all skill positions. Yeah. Um, to finish number one above Kelsey, right? Uh, Hawkinson uh, had a you know a monster year. Kittle, I love. Um, yeah. Najoku, who I drafted, he started out slow, but um, I cut him loose, and and I regretted it because the last month yeah. or two of the season, he's he's been as good as they get in the tight yeah. end position. So let's keep the tight end position, yeah. and know that heading into twenty twenty four, there's there's going to be you know a couple dozen tight ends to choose from. Right. Plus, there's guys like Trey McBride that came on strong towards the end. Jake Ferguson had a pretty overall good year. Yeah. Um some guys that got hurt that are usually well do well, Dalton Schultz, Dallas Goddard. Um so yeah, I, I think the tight end position is actually in in a good spot right now, which I is agree. which is fun. Yeah, I picked Ferguson up off the waiver wire and just left him in. Yeah. Uh he was he was great. Just very very consistent. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Uh, we're not going to go over kickers or defense. They don't matter. Um, but we'll go over the draft really quick just because we thought it'd be interesting to kind of see how things played out. Um, again, we brought up Christian McCaffrey being a huge winner only at pick two. Travis Kelsey, he was the number two tight end, but when you draft him sixth overall, you're expecting big things. And yeah, I think Travis Kelsey's era has kind of ended. I hate to say, um, I mean, he still might be a good player. There's people talking about him retiring. Yeah, which uh, would be interesting. So, well, you got to wonder if it's his fault or if it's Mahomes' fault. I mean, like I said, there are just times Mahomes just look lost out there, and mm-hmm. you know they did have that monster game where Kelsey caught what like three touchdowns in one yeah. game. Um, but Mahomes just didn't look right out there, and and I think Kel- Kelsey suffered from that. Mm-hmm. If Mahomes can turn it around next season, maybe that'll resurrect Kelsey and put him back at the top but um it seemed like he he had to deal with uh, Mahomes' struggles yeah um so yeah so you know looking at round one you know when it when it got to me I, I'm I'm still old school like I said I've been playing fantasy football for 20 years mm-hmm. and I'm I'm a, a running back guy and yeah. so you know a lot of the uh who you know I love Deckler I would love to have had McCaffrey mm-hmm. um but when it when it came to me, I went with the rookie Bijan Robinson, and other than two games where he got benched because he fumbled, uh, he was pretty solid for me all season long. So I yeah. have no regrets taking uh, Bijan Robinson with my first pick. Yeah, and he's another one to watch in the off season because the Falcons have a lot of decisions to make, especially if they lose this final game, they're they're eliminated from the playoffs. There's a very slim chance they could make it, but I don't think so. Um, but a lot of people are calling for Arthur Smith to be fired, but the Falcons are decent enough where they don't have to. But the way that he runs his offense, he just doesn't use his young skill players, even though they have Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson. So it's very frustrating for fantasy managers. So if they yeah. make a change um, to their coaching staff, Bijan could be right back in the top 10 um, yep. next year. But um, like we said, like the, the first three rounds that are up here right now for me, there's so many misses. I think they outweigh the guys that hit, which is interesting that a lot of the bigger name or the league winners came later in the draft. There's not too many guys outside of, you know, McCaffrey, Tyreek Hill, um, that really won a league for people. Yeah. Again, you know, we look at injuries, Nick Chubb, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, he's, he started out fairly consistent in uh, 2023, but then that injury took him out. Mm-hmm. Um, he was done for the season and Ford benefited from that. Right. Um, so again, you know, injuries, you just, you can't predict injuries unless there's a player who's, who's known to have injury problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Nick Chubb, I don't think was really 
known for that. I don't think he was considered an injury risk. Right. Uh, so that hurt Jordan when he drafted Chubb. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's there's several players on here that were drafted in the top two and three rounds who just got bit by the injury bug. Um, now let's go to number nine, pick nine in round two there. Um, you drafted Cooper Cup knowing mm-hmm. that he was he was going to miss the start of the season. He was recovering from what an ankle injury. Yeah. And then they kind of rushed him back in. He re-aggravated that mm-hmm. injury or had a new injury. I don't know if it was a hammy or what. Yeah. Um. So you you took a risk. Do, yep. do you feel having done it all again, would you have passed on Cooper Cup? Um, uh, I don't know because I don't know what I would have done at that position had I not taken Cooper Cup. I don't like Dallas players, so CeeDee Lamb would have been the right choice, but I don't know if I would have made <laughs> that choice. Um, so I'm not sure where I would have necessarily gone. Um, maybe I would have taken Garrett Wilson a little bit earlier, but like if, if then Cooper cup came back to me in the third round, still, I'd probably still be willing to take him. Um, uh, I just felt like I was okay to take a risk this year. Um, and I figured I'd go for it. I don't know if it really panned out either. Um, because Cooper cup had a good season, but he didn't, he didn't do anything far and above right. some of the other guys that I had. So he was, actually usually a tough start for me he was usually kind of right on that edge but it's like the name value made it hard to sit him yeah so i'm not really sure and again like we said in third round like there's not too many league winners except for cd lamb jameer gibbs Um, yeah you know i'm looking at drake's picks uh his 10th pick in round two was dobbins who again mm -hmm. suffered from the injury and then his next pick was josh Jacobs. so yeah those are two players who contributed nothing right to his team. Now he did make, you know, lineup mistakes throughout the season, but mm-hmm. he's at a disadvantage having drafted those two players. Yeah. I will say now that I do remember, I do know that if Josh Allen was going to make it to me, I would have drafted him over Cooper cup. So oh, then yeah. I, so if that would have happened, I would have had the number one running back and the number one quarterback on the season. Oh, so he went just before you. So yeah. So that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping to get Josh Allen and then Malik took him, and I said, okay, well, now that Josh Allen's there, I don't really like anybody else, so I'll just go with the risk, and I went with Cooper Cup. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it hurt me, but I don't think it helped me either. Same with Garrett Wilson. Like, I don't love Garrett Wilson as my third-round pick. Again, that was because of the Aaron Rodgers injury that he didn't have as good of a season, but he still had an, an all-right season overall. Now, not to toot my own horn, but looking at the draft results, I'm surprised to see how far Jameer Gibbs went, like, how far down he went. Mm -hmm. I picked him up with the eighth pick of the third round. And when you look back at his season, he was, I don't know if you'd call him a steal, but uh, he's going to, he's going to be a first rounder next year. So I think, I think his biggest problem was early on in the season. He struggled a little bit and Mm -hmm. he didn't, we had a lot of David Montgomery. People got worried about it, but then midway through the season. And then especially after the bye week which is usually when you see rookies step up, he exploded, and yeah, he's he's for sure, it, especially in this league, he's going to be a first-rounder because he's a lion. Um, yeah. For me personally, I think he's right on that verge of first and second round, but you can't ignore him. I, I really uh, like the way the Lions used him and Montgomery. They really seem to complement each other well. Mm-hmm. When Montgomery was in, Gibbs was resting, and then when Gibbs came in, he seemed explosive. Um, they use them really, really well. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, when I threw out his name, uh, when it came to my turn, I remember Sammy sitting two seats down for me going, Oh, (laughs) I knew that he was going to be going real soon. And I grabbed him and, uh, I really liked that, uh, that, uh, one, two punch of my running backs, Mm -hmm. Bijan and Jameer. I mean, I, I don't know if I benched them all season long, though they stayed in my roster until their bye week. Right. And plus, I mean, taking the risk, obviously it didn't hurt because if you look to round four, five, and six, we got Najee Harris. He had a good end to the season, but he didn't do much. Travis Etienne was a good pick. Um, But then Cam Akers didn't play. Uh, Damian Pierce, terrible second year. We thought he was going to maybe be somebody this year. Yeah, that was one of my biggest busts was uh, Damian Pierce. He he really frustrated me. Yeah. Once he once he found the bench, he stayed there until I got rid of him. Mm-hmm. Ramondre Stevenson had an up and down year. Um, finished it off being hurt. Miles Sanders had an awful year, going to a, a much worse team than he was on last year. 
Kenneth Walker had some some injury issues. Yeah. David Montgomery was a solid pick. Alexander Madison was awful. James Cook took him a little while, but he got going towards the end. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, I think, was a good pick. And then yeah. Jonathan Taylor, my other risk pick, didn't really work out either. He had a couple good games, but then he got injured again. So. Right. Yeah, that, yeah. Those those middle rounds uh, didn't really pan out. So now you're looking at late round steals. Mm-hmm. Um, who jumps out at you from those later rounds? Uh, the, the easiest one is Brees Hall. He's oh, round sure. round eight. Wow, he, that's shocking that he, he gets, went in round eight. Yeah, he gets a ton of catches. He's another one that I think is a first round pick next year, especially if Aaron Rodgers comes back and healthy. Yeah, um, Aaron Rodgers will make Brees Hall even better uh, in that entire offense. Um, I think another solid year from James Conner in the seventh round. He just gets well, he it done. On strong late too. He's he's nothing like super special, but he just gets the job done. Yeah. Um, I think DeAndre Swift. He didn't go crazy, but being in the ninth round, being the Eagles running back. Yeah. You, you are going to get vultured, but I think he had a pretty solid season for the most part. Yeah. Um, I think it was just it was just a tough year for the running back position overall this year. Yeah. Um, I guess my other one is if you go all the way to round 10, Rashad White was a huge uh, pickup for me. Yeah. I don't know if, if he was on many uh, people's radar, but uh, you heard his name all season long, mm-hmm. just playing very, very consistently for the Bucks. Yeah. And I, he's another one that's probably going to fall in the same boat as Kyron Williams, where I don't know where he's going to be next year. If they don't add anybody, he could be another top pick. But, uh, the Bucks' offense is a lot of question marks, so it's hard to say where he's going to be next year, per se. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how things change up in uh, the 2024 draft. Mm-hmm. Um, will we see you know wide receivers go so highly again? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Ty- Tyreek Hill was... Destin, uh, you know, he he had his mind set on uh, breaking some wide receiver records. I don't know if he's mm-hmm. going to hit that 2,000 yards that he was promising. Right. Um, but uh, as it stands right now, let's look into the future. Who is uh, going to who's going to be the number one pick? McCaffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. But at that point, I, I think it could just flip flop. Where I think people might go back to Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, pick two and three poten- uh, yeah. potentially. Then after that, I think it might get interesting and it might go back to running backs uh, crowding up the first round because Kelsey is obviously going to get kicked out of the first round. Um, I don't think anybody's going to go for a quarterback in the first round. Right. And I don't know if there's any receivers that stood out so much that I would still draft them in the first round. Maybe A.J. Brown at the end of the first round. Mm -hmm. Um but that running back situation is, I think, going to be really interesting because you're going to have Gibbs, you're going to have Bijan Robinson, um, Jonathan Taylor might be somebody that people go back to, and then it's kind of a wait and see on guys like Kyron Williams and Travis Etienne, things like that. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be an interesting first round next year. When you have that discussion about when should you start drafting quarterbacks, a name that I like to bring up is Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nobody had their targets set on Kirk Cousins, but midway through the season, he was the number one fantasy quarterback, and I don't think anyone saw that coming. Mm -hmm. And so that goes to show you that you can wait on quarterbacks and get some production. Yeah, and I think especially in standard leagues, like I said, when you have a a 10-team league, there's only going to be about 20 quarterbacks picked if people want a backup. Some people don't. Um, Some have four. Right, and then (laughs) you get only four points per passing touchdown, so that leans towards rushing quarterbacks get a little bit of a boost there um so if you want a traditional quarterback like Kirk Cousins you can wait um and you don't have to get somebody um in those middle rounds that's where Joe Burrow is always a tough draft pick because he has so much upside but he doesn't really use his legs as much and you can get guys similar to Joe Burrow really late in the draft so it's, it's a it's a tough call usually for him but yeah that's one lesson I learned I'm gonna wait on quarterbacks I'm gonna I want to maybe get two running backs to start, maybe a, a, a highly ranked wide receiver, and then start filling in the gaps, but uh, definitely can wait on QB. Yeah, I was going to say, usually if, if you're looking for one of the top quarterbacks, because there's it's usually Mahomes, Allen, and Jalen Hurts, the rule of thumb that I've learned is that they say take the second or third one of those guys. So if you see somebody take, like you took Patrick Mahomes first, then – 
you kind of can wait a little bit. Or if you see the next one go, then jump on that third guy or jump on the second guy because people are, you know, trying to figure out when the quarterback run starts. Yeah. If you don't get one of those top three guys, you might as well just wait. I think one guy worth looking at, not necessarily in the first round, but I think one of the first quarterbacks to come off the board is going to be C.J. Stroud. He was so yeah. darn impressive this mm-hmm. year. So uh, he's he's going to go uh, above some of these traditional quarterbacks. Yeah, and, and the other hard thing, too, is next year's draft class for quarterbacks is one of the top quarterback draft classes we've mm-hmm. had in a long time. So you're going to have to figure out which one's C.J. Stroud, which one's Bryce Young, because you don't yeah. want to pick the guy that's going to be Bryce Young you want that next C.J. Stroud if you're going to go that route. So interesting to think about. Another one, Anthony Richardson had a huge start to the season, mm-hmm. and then he got hurt. So do you trust him when he comes back healthy? I, I think that's the fun part, and that's why I said next year I want us to do some some previews leading up to our, our draft to maybe help some of our league mates talk about some of the rookies, talk about some of the draft strategies and things like that. I think that would be a fun thing to add. We I'm also need to forward. discuss the the young buck who came on late on the scene, uh, came out of nowhere. That young guy named Joe Flacco, <laughs> who uh, helped uh, lead the Cleveland Browns to the playoffs, and yeah. what a story that turned out to mm-hmm. be. Man, yeah, that's him and, fun and to watch. he's he's the reason that Njoku blew up in yeah. the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, and the reason Amari Cooper had yeah. that game that knocked me out of the playoffs. <laughs> right, uh, Cooper really benefited from having. Uh, that uh, future Hall of Famer uh, throwing the ball to him. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Browns do in the playoffs. Right. So that's, I mean, that's that's the fantasy season in a nutshell. We're talking about maybe we'll try to do one more episode where we bring everybody back in and kind of do like a, a little gathering, a little party. Maybe we'll do some interviews or something like that, just something fun. Um, but if not, like I said, we're going to try to come back next year, do some previews, do a little bit more lead up to the draft, I think would be fun. Um, and go from there. But uh, unfortunately, this fantasy season is over. And we hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun uh, trash talking and <laughs> texting each other, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. we hope we gave you some entertaining content during the season and maybe helped you in your fantasy uh, league. Yeah. So uh, until next year, see you later. <laughs>